A very good morning to you all. I'm starting this little video this morning on a slightly different note because I'm not outside, I'm inside the cottage. But there's something quite important that I want to read to you. And it's from today's... It's from today's Irish Times. And... It, I mean, reading it gives me a great deal of reassurance about what I'm doing here at Bealtaine, Bealtaine Cottage. Um, and also the need for goddess permaculture, more than anything else now, the need for goddess permaculture and that mindset of putting the environment before oneself. The six steps urgently needed to save Irish biodiversity. Apparently, one in four species in Ireland is under threat of extinction. Radical action must be taken. The Living Planet Report 2018 reported that there has been an astonishingly steep fall of 60% in biodiversity across the globe over the last 40 years. More than 50 experts from academia, policy, international development and conservation organisation have contributed to the report, so it has credibility. A recent review of research findings from across the world predicted that we would lose an alarming 40% of insect species over the next 30 years. As a small island off the west coast of Europe, Ireland is not immune from these trends. One of the 3,000 species, sorry, of the 3,000 species that have undergone a red list conservation assessment, one in every four species is threatened with extinction here. This includes the European eel, Atlantic salmon, curlew, that's a bird by the way, freshwater pearl mussel, my grandfather was a freshwater pearl fisherman in Uma, angel shark and many more. This is a truly shocking legacy that we are handing on to future generations. The Living Planet Report 2018 concludes, we are the first generation that has a clear picture of the value of nature and the enormous impact we have on it. We may also be the last generation that can act to reverse this trend. Sobering words indeed. Ireland's semi-natural habitats are so fragmented that, as a matter of urgency, the last remaining must be afforded statutory protection. Are you beginning to understand now why I left London 15 years ago and came back here and sought out what I could afford, which was the poorest part of rural Ireland and the poorest land, and started the Bealtaine project, much to the amusement and sarcastic criticism of many people. Anyway, I'll continue on. The evidence is now clear. Biodiversity across the globe is being destroyed at an alarming rate. Biodiversity loss is not just about the loss of species, but also the services that nature provides, which we often take for granted. These services include water purification, productive soils, climate regulation, carbon sequestr sequestration, pollination, 
pest control and many others, all of which bring enormous benefits to Irish society and the economy. If current trends continue, systems will collapse, causing dramatic disruption to sectors such as agriculture and forestry. Can I just intercept there and say both of those are extremely, proven to be extremely, extremely damaging to the environment. Because both of those um, see the land as nothing more than something from which they can make money. And forestry, well we all know what that means. Sitka spruce monoculture, poisonous monoculture. And anyway, I'll continue. <clears throat> and damage to our physical and mental well-being. Radical action is needed to maintain our natural resources. Well, one of the reasons why, as a woman of a certain age living on her own, I appear to laugh so much, which I do. I laugh an awful lot more. <laughs> off camera than what I do on camera is because my mental well-being is is of a happy disposition the only time when it when it appears to go downhill in any way is when I when I'm um drawn into social media you know drawn into outside um, human-made nonsense. Radical action is needed to maintain our natural resources. A great deal has been written about biodiversity loss, yet there is a dearth of practical solutions on how we can change the trajectory that Ireland is on. The solution that I'm offering here at Bealtaine Cottage has been in place for 15 years and the reason why I have put so much stuff up on social media. I mean, I've yet to come across anyone who's put as much stuff out there on social media about wildlife and, 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 and growing and harvesting and planting and the the myriad of stuff in between and all open source all of it open source and no advertisements no profits to be made from it it's just put out there regularly the adoption of just six key policies by government could radically alter public policy for biodiversity and mitigate the worst impacts of climate change. Number one, establish a government department for biodiversity and rural economy, supported by an independent state agency for nature conservation. This is essential to advocate for biodiversity and to promote innovative ways to demonstrate its benefits to the rural economy. Well, there we go. Number one, and they've already got something incredibly and stupidly wrong. An independent state agency for nature conservation. No, we don't need that for nature con conservation. There's very little to conserve out there. It needs to be for nature promotion, nature regeneration, putting nature first, not to conserve what little bit of, of, of what's, what, what we have left after the ravaging of the countryside by EU policy, which is about ripping out hedgerows, ripping out trees, so the satellites that go overhead can map out exactly how much grazing land there is for animals. Number two, 
designate and conserve a network of sites of national, regional and local importance for nature conservation, supported by programmes and financial incentives to promote positive land management within these sites. Financial incentives? I have not received one penny from either the Irish government or the EU for what I've done here. Nor have I, well, yes, yes, I have sought grants and I've actually filled in application forms and over the 15 years, been just been turned down, consistently turned down. And there were weeks and months here at Bealtaine Cottage and indeed years when I literally flew by the seat of my pants financially. I was putting euro coins into a jar, saving up each month to pay my mortgage. It's only been in recent years, well over the recent year, I think it's been a year now since I've been supported by Patreon. And thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. And I've been able to get some books out and, 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 and that's been a means of support. Ireland's semi-natural habitats are so fragmented that, as a matter of urgency, the last remaining fragments of importance at the national, regional and local level must be afforded statutory protection. The reason why I've paid a mortgage every month is to ensure that this place is protected. Because if I own it, I can protect it. And that's what I've done. Number three, all farms in receipt of cap payments and other subsidies should have a minimum 20% of their land area actively promoting biodiversity enhancement measures. Aligning farming policy with climate and biodiversity policy is a huge challenge. Recognising and rewarding farmers for positive management of farmland features, including hedgerows, most of those have gone, field margins, areas of semi-natural habitats, stream ponds, etc., would be a very significant step in the right direction. Transition to a forestry programme based solely on native broadleaf species. Yeah, that's fine, but if you're going to continue planting them in rows so they can be harvested by big machines, you don't have a forestry. You just have another cash crop. We need to put ourselves second. I mean, this is almost like, like talking foul filth over the net. We need to put ourselves second. Human unkind must be, must be willing to accept second place to Mother Earth. <clears throat> Forest policy needs to transition to a model based on continuous cover native woodland thereby increasing the value of woodlands as carbon sinks, phasing out clear felling of non-native trees on upland peatlands and promoting the planting of Irish species on more appropriate lands. So you see there again, look, they're talking about um, native species and non-native species and yet the climate change, what has happened with the weather means that our um, our own climate is changing. We have to adapt to that. That's why I, I threw that personal um, little thing out the window here and I said whatever will grow here, I will plant it and I will encourage it. 
I'm looking for as much biodiversity as is humanly possible. Native species are very important, of course they are. But the way that I've planted here at Bealton the Cottage has not in any way, shape or form taken away or undermined the native species. If anything, it has actually encouraged and helped and given health to the native species. Transfer, number five, transfer ownership of all publicly owned peatlands to a new agency, establishing established solely to manage them for their natural capital benefits. In addition to being of inordinate biodiversity value, peatlands are Ireland's most important long-term stores of carbon. And that's only because this once forested land was basically clear felled. They don't say that, do they? All peatlands and public ownership should be transferred to a new state body, Natural Capital Ireland. Don't like the sound of that. Natural Capital Ireland. To safeguard their value as a long-term natural capital resource. And I don't like the sound of that either. The essence of it, yes, I agree with. <sighs> Number six, designate at least 30% of Ireland's inshore waters and 50% of our off offshore waters as marine conservation areas where fishing, farming and prospecting would be prohibited. Well, that's a pretty sound. To ensure that marine biodiversity has a sufficient area to flourish and recruit populations, a minimum of 30% of inshore waters and 50% of our offshore marine territory should be designated as marine conservation areas, where commercial trawling, aquaculture and prospecting would be prohibited. The identification of these policies is predicted on taking a long-term rather than a short-term view of land use and resource management. The implementation will need leadership, but if they were implemented, it would move Ireland towards becoming a leader in resource management. Resource management. <sighs> None of these words I use. Ensure Ireland's natural resources could survive one of the most harmful impacts of climate change and provide the conditions necessary for the conservation of biological diversity. And this is written by Dr. Liam L Lysicht. is a director of the National Biodiversity Data, Data Centre. Well, I would like to invite Liam here to be out in the cottage. Um, but he probably doesn't even know of the place. Um, anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. I'm going to put another video up later on. I just thought this was important to share this with you. Because it shows at least, at the very least, that the media is now taking this on board as a serious issue. And that people, you know, the suited and booted, who appear to kind of govern everything anyway, um, are also taking it on board. But it's very pertinent to Ireland. But I really wish, I really, really wish that some of those suited and booted people would visit Bealtaine Cottage. I freely welcome them to visit here, to spend two or three hours here, to walk around, to spend a day here, to spend more than a day here if they want, but to see what has flourished here, how it's flourished, and the simplicity of the entire plan. Blessings to you all.